Hey everybody, my name is Rick Zini, CEO of BearCompare.com. Thank you for joining us for video podcast number 48. I've um, got some interesting stuff to chat about this week. We've got the fall deal zone. Summer's almost over, but the fun certainly hasn't ended. <laughs> and also, um, I've been talking on the radio this morning about some freebies for flyers and other travel bargains. Uh, the adventurist... Uh, event of the week is going to be one that actually I'm going to. Hey, and guess what? I'm going to this event. And then we're going to take a question from the customer. Uh, so let me introduce our editor at the site at faircompare.com, Ann McDermott from California. Hey, Ann. Let me guess. This event you're going to go to has something to do with golf? Yes, I'm a big golf fan. Oh. So off to the Ryder Cup. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, let's talk a little bit about the fall deal zone. We talked, I think, in a previous uh, podcast mm -hmm. about the magic date of August the 23rd. Uh, that's a departure date. Kids are back in school on that date. Um, prices tend to drop both in, uh, domestically and in, into uh, across the oceans, so specifically, more specifically to Europe than it does to Asia, for example. Um, but uh, we do see the prices dropping, and the main reason for this is a couple things. One is, um, as, we, as I noted, kids are back to school. That reduces demand. People aren't as flexible about shopping. We've also seen sort of historically uh, this time of year where uh, people just aren't spending as much. We see some empty middle seats, and once you have a few empty middle seats, the this airline's automated reservation systems automatically kick in and start to drop the price. So we've also seen fuel prices drop uh, recently. They've been sort of hovering between forty and fifty dollars uh, a, a gallon. So. I mean, excuse me, a gallon, a barrel. Um, <laughs> a barrel has several gallons in it, um, but uh, that's that's certainly helped things. Airlines are making record profits, um, so you know that they're making some money there. So ticket prices are probably at their peak. Uh, so that's sort of why things have been dropping. I think a lot of people, when uh, they were asking about, what do you mean a fall deal zone? Uh, you know, they just kept thinking in their heads, August 23rd is the day prices <laughs> fall, which is true, but it stays down nice and low, uh, except like the, the big jump for U.S. domestic flyers is, of course, right. Thanksgiving. So you have the entire month of September and the entire month of October, the first couple weeks in November. During that time frame, October, you see another little dip, uh, transatlantic yeah. in prices. Um, and then you got the first couple weeks in December. Um, we saw a lot of the sales, especially these Tuesday, Wednesday only, these Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday sales. They tended to peter out sort of in mid-January um, with, with blackouts, of course, for Thanksgiving and, and the last couple weeks in December and the first week in January. So um, that's where that deal zone is. And it's really uh, about flexible flying. If you can fly during that time frame, you're going to save, save a ton of money. I was just looking at the difference in prices this morning from several cities as I was doing some radio shows. And, I mean, out of some cities, if you're paying over $200, you're paying too much for your airline ticket. Well, and I notice you, you'll see this reflected in air, airline sales. I noticed this morning um, the Southwest sale is continuing, and for the first time in, in memory for me, they are advertising deals as cheap as $39 <laughs> each way. One way, so remember that has to include taxes. They have to include everything now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. so you can get some. There are some bargains for fall travel. For yeah. fall travel. So here's the here's the best thing to do. Just come to the side, do a search, set up an alert. We'll send you a notification whenever thing whenever something changes, and uh, just look for some of those good deals that are out there. Also, we'll, we'll send you a deals list once a week, and you can take a look at that as well. So um, the other thing that that uh, it's interesting too is. Um, we, we were discussing on the radio this morning in several cities was a set of freebies that have started to show up for airlines. Now, let's be clear here. <laughs> freebies and airlines don't typically, aren't usually said in the same sentence, especially in the last uh, 15, 20 years. Um, but, you know, uh, one of the things that we've definitely seen in the last, what, seven or eight months is an upgrade. And I wouldn't say the meal because you don't really get a meal in domestic, but you do get a snack. 
and the snacks um, have been upgraded. And and the you know the one that we've talked about in the past is the Stroop waffle, which which I ordered on Amazon. My I ate one, and my daughter ate the rest. I, I can tell you that wasn't me. Um, Delta's uh, you know got the Biscoff cookies and and whatnot. So I think the thing that uh, really caught my eye on the freebie side was the the uh, millennial-based internet and entertainment <laughs> system. So uh, free internet in some cases, or at least uh, you know limited to certain things. Also some entertainment, TV, satellite TV, even uh, even things that uh, probably shouldn't be shown to uh, the five-year-olds behind the seat, like Game of Thrones. Um, you know, so that, and apparently that's that's something that they're all the airlines are. Are, uh, are going to be tossing out there, um, and the one that that I thought was funny that that you know I, I actually tried a long time ago when Virgin America first came out with their aircraft was the seat to seat texting. Mm -hmm. So you can actually you know be sitting in four B and uh, you know text a message to somebody in thirteen A. It's actually a little bit. It's kind of fun. There's a little bit of security there, so you can't just randomly text everybody. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so you know, I'm, I'm surprised that hasn't been hacked by somebody, <laughs> and that's one of the interesting Please. things too about having internet on aircraft. Uh, there is a free flow of information there. So um, I think the FAA, well, along with the Department of Transportation, also has given us a freebie uh, recently with the FAA reauthorization bill by uh, throwing in a hey, they have to refund your bag fee if it doesn't show up within 12 hours. I guess that's 18 hours for international, 12 hours to. Um, if that happens uh, before, it might take them. I've seen it up to the, them to finally de declare a lost bag, which is the only thing they had to refund before, after a week and sometimes even a week and a half or so. Well, I I, I can just speak to my own experience with a, a a lost bag, a bag that was lost for uh, two and a half days, and this was on a trip to Europe. Yeah. I I mean, it took me days to finally, you know. All, all this work you have to put into to getting your stuff, which is one reason why I now do, as you tell me, as you told me, <laughs> carry on. But at least this is, it sounds like this will make the process, you know, automatic as opposed to you having to go through the drudgery of, you know, saying, hey, you lost my bag. Yeah, I haven't looked at the, the final ruling, but I'm hoping, and I doubt that it's in there, it actually says the time frame in which they must refund your money. You remember when you buy your ticket, nanoseconds later, your money is gone. <laughs> when you go to get refunds from the airlines, it's not nanoseconds. It can, no. I've seen it up to two credit card billing cycles in some cases. And finding the right person and hassling through that and getting a person on the phone because there's no electronic way to ask for it, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, it goes in fast and comes out really slow. A couple of the other bargains are uh, Alaska, which is very yeah. nice, gives you a, a, a voucher for if your bag shows up late on the carousel, and that means like, you know, 20 minutes, uh, you know, beyond 20 minutes of landing, which I think is very decent of them. I just wonder how many Alaskan Alaska Airlines passengers actually have a stopwatch and they're out there. The plane, <laughs> land, the plane lands and they're like, no, that's 20 minutes and one second. You owe me a $25 voucher. Um, so I'm, I'm so I'd love to see actually try that one time and, and see how that uh, happens. I think the other bargain, which isn't really super free, but it's almost next to free in some cases because credit cards, in many cases that you have reimburse you for it, is TSA PreCheck. Um, or global entry if you're flying internationally, which is just slightly a bit more, $85 a year or $100 for five, excuse me, $85 for five years and $100 for five years. It's a bargain and it saved me and I've done, and I've been a member sort of since the, they just initially announced it. Um, it saved me at least, oh gosh, flying probably 30 to 40 hours in wait time. Wow. Wow, that is worth it. No yeah, kidding. so yeah, so the I mean it's just it, it's one of the nicest features, especially global entry when you're coming back and they dump in, you know, mm -hmm. seven or eight triple sevens and everybody's getting off and everybody's at, at, at immigration and customs when you can just sort of zip right through. So, um, really a good deal and not quite a freebie, but probably one of the best deals that are out there. We have a question now from a customer. His name is Steve, and to be honest, I don't know where Steve is writing from. It could be the U.S., it could be outside. 
But let me give you his question. He says, I've often heard you say buy airline tickets about 90 days prior to the date of travel to get the best deal. And then he asks, does that apply at holidays or is it better to purchase earlier than 90 days? And specifically, he says, should I purchase now or wait to purchase tickets for travel on December 17th? Uh, and it looks like a return of December 22nd. Okay, so a couple things. Um, I want to be very clear about this. It's sort of like you shouldn't buy your ticket by the 90-day mark. That's when you should start shopping. Okay. So at about the 90-day mark, the airline reservation systems start to kick in and start to release some cheaper seats as they're probing for demand to see where things are. Before the 90-day mark, they tend to be selling the fourth, fifth, sixth cheapest price point in the marketplace uh, for that particular flight. And then at the 90-day mark, they start. Now, they may not throw it in there right there on the 90-day mark, so it's you want to start shopping, uh, kick the tires, set up alerts, for example, come to the site, you know, set up an alert for a particular trip or so, a couple different dates, yeah. for example. Um, but you do want to buy that ticket sort of in the 90 to 30 day window. Once you're inside of 30 days, you're playing right into the airline's hands. There's actually 30 day airfare, which are tend to be the cheapest 30 day advance purchase. Those go away after the 30 day mark. Then there's a 21 day fare and then a 14 day fare. And, and progressively they get more expensive to the to the point where the the price point is assuming that your boss can afford to, to pay four or five times what the 30 day uh, fare would have been ahead of time. So you want to do it in that window. No perfect exact day, but signing up for alerts will help you know when prices are sort of doing. Now there is, there is an exception and that exception is around the most popular days to fly. That would be the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, the Sunday after, for example. Uh, depending on where uh, Christmas falls, it would be a few of the days around Christmas. Uh, Christmas for airlines actually starts the, the, the third week in December, so that 17 December uh, time frame certainly would, uh, would apply to that rule. So you can shop for those tickets. Uh, pretty much any time they're not going to drop and they tend to actually get higher as you get closer to the date so it's fine for example uh, I just for example bought my uh, Thanksgiving uh, tickets that we're, we're doing some stuff on a couple weeks ago Wow so, but I, the price point was one that I knew was actually not going to get any better. <laughs> um, and, and those tend to be places like warm weather destinations that are very popular and whatnot. It depends on where your destination is as well. Um, but in many cases, like the 17th and the 22nd of December, you're good to go ahead and shop anytime. If you see the ticket prices, uh, and I'll give sort of a rule of thumb. He didn't say what his route was, did he? No, I didn't, I didn't no he didn't. No. Yeah, so let's ass let's assume that it's under a 90-minute flight. That would typically be a, somewhere in, uh, you know, a flight that's somewhere in the 200 to 300 mile range. Um, you you don't have to worry so much about those tickets because that would be like Dallas, Houston, Boston, New York, San Francisco, LA. Those ticket prices typically aren't affected by Christmas travel that much, so you're in pretty good shape. So then when you start looking at sort of going across half the country, which would be approximately, let's just say, 1,200 miles or so. Yeah. Um, aircraft fly, you know, anywhere between 350 to 500 miles per hour. So you're looking at a two-hour flight approximately. If that ticket price round trip uh, for Christmas travel is sort of in the – each way 150 to 160 range. That's typically not bad for Christmas time travel. If you're looking for something in the 120 each way, which would give you 240, 250, you should snap it up really quickly. And then when you're going coast to coast, approximately 2,500 miles or so, you're, you're going to be looking at prices in the 400s as good deals, right? So coast to coast, the Holy Grail is $200 round trip. I've seen a few of those, by the way, and on Tuesdays uh, and Wednesday travel lately. Um, and and then, you know, you're looking at the, the 400s coast to coast. Anything in the 400s you probably want to jump on, especially during Christmas travel or around the dates. Uh, unless you're traveling on Christmas Day or, or, or um, New Year's Day. Um, and then, you know, then it starts to go up above that. We see them in the 500 to 600 range. Anything in the 300, snap it up immediately. Now, these prices, you're talking about Christmas prices. Would, would these same prices apply as good deals versus bad ones for the Thanksgiving period? Yeah, it's very similar, right? But the Thanksgiving's a little bit different in the sense that if you if you 
if you actually can stretch it and come back like on a Monday or Tuesday afterwards or return on a Saturday, uh, travel Monday, Tuesday, not the Wednesday before, which is the most expensive, um, then you have a little more flexibility. The price point's a little bit lower. And on Christmas, you have this three-week window. So some of the days are way cheaper than other days. Mm. You know, if Christmas, and I, I don't have a calendar sitting in front of me, but if it fell on a weekend, for example, uh, you'd be looking at some of the day, the day of Christmas and the day of New Year's being the cheapest. Typically, the eves being a little bit more cheaper than the day before that. It just depends if it's a Saturday or Sunday that you're traveling on because Christmas falls on a weekday like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, then those tend to be more expensive. Let's talk about the Eventurous app, which I highly recommend. And I know you do too. I do. And yeah, and I actually, well, the Eventurous app was an app uh, wasn't out when I actually bought tickets to this event, <laughs> which was two years ago. Um, but uh, the Ryder Cup in Chaska, Minnesota, heading up there uh, at the at the end of September um, uh, to check it out. I actually went to the Ryder Cup in Scotland at Glen Eagles uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Ryder Cup is held every couple of years. Um, it's U.S. versus Europe. Lots of good spirits, sort of like the. Olympics. I'm almost, I'll have to be honest with you, Adam, I'm almost Olympic out. I've been on a straight diet of Olympics with my daughter and wife for about, I guess we're, what, uh, 10 days into it now? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm not positive I can uh, I can watch too much more of it. I do want to catch a few of the events. Now, I will have to admit, Usain Bolt has got to be one of the, the best characters in the history of sports. So I loved watching that the other night. Um, but Back to the writer, huh? <laughs> U.S. <laughs> versus Europe. Um, fun event. Check it out. Uh, there, actually, I I was sort of, I, I was like, I bought these tickets. I we got on the waiting list. You have to actually submit right after the event occurs. The previous wow. one didn't get on the waiting, didn't make it on, didn't get tickets. Had to go through a broker to do some stuff. And now I see that they're selling day tickets for way cheaper than I bought them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so check that out. Um, but uh, yeah, flying into Minneapolis, um, and uh, it's That's not too nice far city. away. Yeah, um, and uh, it's a it's going to be a cool event. I, I'm, uh, the golf course is a really historic golf course, and a quarter of a million happy spectators. Uh, probably about two hundred and thirty thousand from the U.S. and twenty thousand from Europe. So let's give them hell while we're out there. <laughs> okay, and are, would you be bringing your golf clubs? Because you know, I'll expect another story on how the airline mistreated them. No, I actually <laughs> didn't have enough time to sort of uh, actually sneak in, and they have some great golf in Wisconsin too, and 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 some locations. Uh, and it, it's this time of year is perfect for that. I just just going to be heading to the actual tournament itself. So, but I wish I had my golf clubs. So. <laughs> But I, for those people that, that want to do that, they absolutely some beautiful golf courses up there. So check it out. You can get either tickets for the, the practice rounds or uh, for the actual event Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I just wanted to mention, if you want to ask more questions about golf or anything like Steve did, please send it to customer.service at faircompare.com, and Rick will answer your question. And I have to admit, and it's the one event that I didn't have to sort of skim over ahead of time because I'm quite up on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so have that at it. Great. Thanks, for everybody, for watching the video podcast. We'll get number 49 next week. Uh, be sure and send us some questions so that we can uh, provide the answers. And we do send the questions. Don't uh, don't forget that I don't know where you live, <laughs> where your origin city is, or your destination. Um, so be sure and include the routes as well. In many cases, I, I I can give general answers for the most part, but it's a little bit easier when I know what the destinations are. So uh, when you ask questions, be sure to remind me to remind me to uh, to show you where that at and any alternates you may have as well. Thanks everybody. Thanks.